Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you to the organizer for the invitation. So yeah, talk about uh, assembly bias, not just that, but uh, we'll see if I can make it. So what I'm going to say is based on uh, uh, work that I've done with uh, Ravi and uh, some scattered thoughts that I'm trying to put together. Uh, you're welcome to help. So just before we go on, just a very brief uh, reminder of what discussion sets uh, are. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows, but it's good to uh, review to speak. It is on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so when 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 uh, we do a question sets, what what we have in mind is that we sit at a place that we think may become a halo, and then we smooth uh, the density field over many concentric spheres around that position, and this gives uh, as the smoothing scale changes, this uh, gives. Uh, a trajectory as uh, R changes the trajectory for, for, for delta. Okay. Uh, this is not working anyway. Uh, oh, there is this thing here should be a smaller. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll blind someone. Um, okay. So uh, since uh, you, what you're after is the, the so wh when this trajectory crosses uh, some threshold, then at the scale for which it crosses, th so that scale gives you the mass of the halo. So different uh, places will have different trajectories associated to them, so they will have different crossing scales, so this will give halos of different masses. So as you can see, this is a first passage problem, because we want to see the scale for which your delta uh, function of, of radius crosses the threshold for the first time. So the, the problem here is that this, uh, the, 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 the random walks uh, that, uh, that you are uh, playing with are, have correlative steps. <coughs> they, they actually don't really look like this. So this is the, the walks that I, I, I draw, draw here are very jagged, but the walks that you deal with in, 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 cosmolo co in uh, cosmological problems are actually quite smooth. So, right, so this makes uh, the computation of the first crossing distribution harder. Because technically speaking, the process is not Markovian anymore. So anyway, if you manage to compute this uh, first crossing <laughs> probability, then you're in business because then you have uh, the something that you that maps into the mass function of halos. Um, okay. Um, so, but th there is a thing that you can do. So I, I said that computing the first crossing probability is hard, but computing the up crossing distribution is actually very easy because now the walks are, are smooth. So talking about the derivative, the slope of the walk is, is uh, something that is statistically well defined. So constraining uh, the derivative at the crossing, which means up crossing, simply requesting that you're crossing the barrier upwards guarantees that you have been uh, below threshold at larger scales. So this uh, is uh, on, uh, uh, at least for large masses, a, a very good uh, approximation of the first crossing distribution. So you can forget about this, uh, 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 in the old jargon, cloud in cloud problem, and just uh, talk about up crossing. So two variables are enough on uh, most of the scales that you can, uh, you, you're, you're gonna deal with. So this is a, a, a plot where we, we tested this for a wide range of, uh, uh, barriers, so we have scale-dependent barriers, different power spectra, and uh, uh, different filters. So this works uh, well for all of them. But there is more to the problem uh, than just the, the, there's more information in this question set than just the first crossing scale, right? Because we, we have all this portion of the trajectory which uh, uh, follows the, the, the first crossing. Now this, portion of the trajectory tells you something about the uh, formation history of your halo. If you imagine that uh, you will look at the, you do the same thing at very, uh, at a high redshift, then your threshold must be high up because in order to pull yourself together earlier, you need to be denser, so, denser, so the threshold is, uh, threshold is uh, larger. Uh, the threshold being larger means that the first crossing of, uh, uh, the first crossing scale will also be uh, larger and therefore 
the mass that you have assembled will be, will be smaller. Remember here, uh, S goes uh, to a large, big S means a small mass, and small S means a large mass. So um, as you now change uh, the height of the uh, threshold because you let evolve your, your, your universe, so you go at uh, smaller redshifts, then the threshold uh, drops, and therefore the first crossing scale moves to the right towards larger masses, because the more time goes on, and, and, and then and more th is the mass that you can accrete on your halo. So you can see that the, the, uh, the um, first crossing scale moves, uh, and when, you, when the derivative of the trajectory is uh, uh, positive, then the crossing scale moves in a continuous way. While when the derivative of the uh, um, trajectory is uh, negative, then you have a jump of the first crossing uh, scale. So you can uh, think that the, the uh, smooth uh, uh, change of the uh, mass, the function of, of, uh, of redshift of the accretion mass, is a smooth accretion, while finally jumps are uh, mergers. So, uh, and all this, uh, and, and since this, this is the, the picture, then you can see that the, the slope of the trajectory, when the, where the, the slope is positive, maps into the accretion rate. So how fast you are accreting at that redshift. Actually, it would be inverse of the accretion rate, because you have to invert, so S uh, is a function of, of M, so you want to invert this, so that gives you the inverse derivative. So, uh, quite generally, uh, um, steeper slopes will give you a uh, slower uh, accretion rate. So this uh, explains that if you now have two halos, two trajectories that cross at the same uh, scale at a given redshift, but with different slopes, then this will map into halos with uh, different accretion rates. So the, the, the steeper slope means uh, uh, lower accretion rate uh, at the redshift uh, Z1. But the fact that the accretion rate is lower means that the steep is uh, larger. The density, the delta is uh, higher at uh, uh, larger scales. So this, part, this portion of the trajectory, the blue one, is uh, above the red one. So it means that in, in the past, when the threshold, threshold was higher, the first crossing of the blue trajectory was uh, happened earlier. So for uh, a mass that was uh, closer, right? So this, this uh, separation is, uh, is uh, smaller than this uh, separation here. So this means that the blue halo, which is accreting slow, more slowly now, had accreted most of its mass in the past, past. And this is why it is accreting slowly now, because all the mass is already in place. But now look at the other side of the, of the, of the trajectory. So steeper slope brings me to lower density environment. So the other reason why the halo is accreting more slowly now is because it lives in a lower density environment. So there is no matter to accrete. So, um, so this is, this is, uh, this is uh, assembly bias, and so this is what uh, was uh, uh, seen in embodied simulation. It is now uh, detected in, in data. You will hear, we will hear about it uh, tomorrow. But th this is, uh, naturally embedded in the theory, and it's very easy to talk about it once you realize that uh, uh, the basically everything is mediated by the uh, slope of the trajectory at the crossing. So it's a very uh, simple way of uh, modeling this effect. So, okay, now we said, uh, we said that the slope, uh, the derivative is an important uh, uh, quantity in the game that we're playing. And so you may, may worry, what about higher derivatives, right? I may uh, wonder whether also the second derivative plays a role. Well, it turns out that for uh, uh, stochastic variables that are non-Markovian, if you take derivatives, you di differentiate them with uh, respect to the, the, the evolution parameter, then eventually you will end up with uh, Markovian variables. So uh, maybe with a system of Markovian variables. In, th in the case that uh, we care about for cosmology, so the PET filter or compact filters and lambda CDM like power spectrum, so delta is non Markovian, like we said, but its derivative is. So you can write a second order differential equation for delta, which has uh, 
something that looks like a white noise. So this correlation function is white noise. It, it blows up when the, these two scales uh, are the same. So it's like a delta function. Uh, this is what we call Markov velocity. So delta, the density as the uh, smoothing scale changes is non-Markovian. So it correlates with the previous. Huh? I'm just saying it, it's uh, the, the noise at two different scales. So that's it's just white noise. <coughs> so, um, so this means that uh, since there is no second derivative in the game, like we said, it means that if, if I try to tailor expand the delta uh, uh, in, uh, as a tailor series in, in, uh, in the smoothing uh, radius, then I have the starting point, I have the first derivative, so the slope of the trajectory, and try to expand uh, my trajectory around the crossing, then this expansion breaks down. The second derivative never appears, because at some point, stochasticity becomes important. So there is this term that uh, goes like a fractional power, delta r to the 3 half. So this dominates over an, a, a possible second derivative term that would go like uh, r, del delta r squared. So I should stop this Taylor expansion. So this is all, all, all I need to do. So this means that, since this, this is what is uh, happening, it means that the conditional probability of delta at one scale, given the whole past trajectory, is only, it reduces to the conditional probability of delta at one scale, given delta at uh, a larger scale, and the slope at the larger scale. So the process has become the process has become a Markov process in two variables. The conditional distribution is only sensitive to the constraint on two variables, and this is it. Translated into the language of halos, this means that uh, remember delta was telling me the mass of the halo, and uh, the slope was telling me the accretion rate at the redshift that I'm looking the, 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 uh, at, at the halo. So at uh, fixed now mass and accretion rate, then there is no residual correlation with the environment. So there is assembly bias, but it's not uh, uh, very complicated, at least in a simple model. So this is the, 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 the pictorial view of what I just said, right? If this, in this plot, we, uh, I'm plotting the mean density of delta as a function of scale, given uh, uh, height and slope, uh, at the fixed scale. So I'm, I'm keeping the uh, large scale uh, fixed, uh, and then I am changing this uh, little s. So you see that uh, if, if the process were uh, Markovian in delta, I would expect just a flat, uh, flat uh, uh, slope. But in this case, you see that there is uh, so the mean of delta, as I change the, the smoothing scale, depends, uh, is sensitive to the slope at the crossing, as, as it should. And you see that the larger the slope is, uh, the higher your, block, your random walk is fluctuating for smaller scales, uh, which gives, uh, uh, like we, we said, the early uh, um, formation time, earlier formation time. But also, it brings you to fluctuate to lower density environments, so um, mm, smaller bias. But uh, this is all there is to it, right? If, if, you, if you now do things at fixed uh, uh, mass and slope, then you are able to decouple the two portions of the trajectory. Uh, okay, so we, so I said this is all there is to it at large masses. So we may wonder uh, what happens at small masses. So we all agree that at small masses, uh, uh, spherical collapse is uh, uh, breaking down, so you need to come up with something else. And in particular, uh, it's uh, common to say that the barrier becomes stochastic. What th this means, th this means that there are just other variables that are coming into play. So if you don't know what they are, they, you just call the barrier stochastic. So this could be uh, large scale shear. It could be the shape of your proto halo. It could be the velocity dispersion. And also, this would make the barrier scale dependent. You see here, there's a, there's a trend. However, look, look how much structure there is in this plot here, like because there, there are colors. So you can, you can clearly see that there are bands. So here, halos of different types uh, clearly are uh, not only selecting uh, uh, 
barriers of different uh, height, but also barrier barriers of different slope. Right? So at, uh, uh, but if the barrier has a steeper slope, it means that it, it will also select uh, trajectory in delta with a steeper slope. If the barrier is flat, it will select trajectories that are flat. Now, trajectories that uh, uh, are uh, steep at uh, uh, small masses will most, most likely uh, go uh, to negative deltas before uh, reaching zero at uh, very large scales. So this will this represent halos that are anti-biased. While trajectories that are allowed to cross with, with a flat slope may have reached there without uh, taking turns, and therefore these uh, will uh, uh, represent halos that are uh, weakly biased. So this naturally accommodates the fact that there, that there are different populations of halos that have different biases. Of course, this is model dependent, because if you want to predict everything from first principle, you have to give me the variables that uh, predict the scatter in the, in the barrier and in the slope of the barrier, more, more, most importantly. So what, uh, what have we said so far? So you, you, we pick a model that has to explain where the halos form. As Kirshen said, it is not enough. So we may need something like peaks to select uh, precise locations or, or, or uh, alternative uh, uh, models. And we have to model the threshold. Uh, when, once we have done that, then at uh, uh, large masses, larger than the typical mass, mass then most trajectories uh, will uh, reach the threshold uh, directly because they, they have to go to, to cross fast, so they, they cannot take turns. For every turn, you pay a statistical price, so this is, it is very unlikely. So you have the large mass uh, behavior of the ascending bias, while uh, uh, so where steeper slopes uh, uh, give uh, uh, smaller bias and vice versa. While at uh, masses that are smaller than the typical mass, then uh, you may have the, the uh, threshold with different slopes, and dif these thresholds with different slopes uh, will give you different biases for the halos that are associated to that. And a, a good candidate that uh, uh, may um, be used to, to, to explain the, the, to model the slope of the barrier is uh, uh, the initial electricity of photo halos that uh, I believe Cristiano will, will uh, talk about later. So um, how much time do I have? Five? OK, that's my next to the last slide. Don't be fooled by the number. <laughs> so I, I take the, the side step that I was uh, hoping to take. So this is uh, uh, not about uh, ascending bias, but just parameterizing bias in a, a model-independent way. So in quite generally, if the model that you choose to describe uh, uh, halos have has more variables, so there is more than just uh, uh, the overdensity on the Lagrangian scale of the halo, then you will have more bias parameters. Uh, and in general, these bias parameters uh, will be associated to, uh, will, will carry a bias that is scale dependent. So delta will give you, the, the mean delta will give you the, the long wavelength mode, while additional variables will give you modulations of this uh, uh, long wavelength mode. So they will introduce uh, terms that go like uh, k square. So the values uh, of all these bias parameters that you, these additional bi bias parameters that you have to introduce because you have more variables are, they of course, they depend on, on, the, on the model. But the relations that uh, Ravi was uh, mentioning earlier, there, there, are, there are relations between, between these bias parameters which Sometimes are called the consistency relations. So these relations are, are completely model independent. They only depend on the set of variables that you are that you have decided to play with. So the model of collapse could be a crazy function of those variables, but take two different uh, crazy functions uh, of the same uh, uh, set of variables, and the consistency relations between the, the, the bias parameters will be the same. So we should not marginalize over all these things, right? Because uh, if you want to marginalize over the model, uh, you should not mar marginalize over something that is uh, model independent. So what does the, do these uh, bias parameters uh, uh, do? So they, do, they describe the response of the mass function to the change of the mean values of these uh, uh, stochastic variables. 
you uh, have more uh, variables that describe the uh, collapse of a halo. So now you, you, you try to change their means so that you poke the initial conditions of the halo a little bit and you see, see what happens. So um, it, it means that since you want to see how the mass function changes locally when you change the mean of all these variables, that then this means that you have to, it's, it's a response, so you need to take derivatives, right? So, but you need to find out what is the appropriate, so there is an appropriate differential operator for each of these uh, bias parameters. So this is uh, uh, related to what uh, Vincent was saying, was saying earlier. Um, but uh, differential operator does not mean uh, that uh, it's just a derivative, right? Because now these variables could be scalars, but they could be vector under rotations. For instance, in peak theory, you have the gradient of the, of, of the density field. You have the second derivative of the density, density field, which is, uh, which is the tensor. You have shear, you have all these quantities. If they are scalars, vector, and tensors, they be belong to different representations of the uh, group of rotations. And therefore, they will have different uh, uh, rotationally invariant uh, um, derivative operators. So you need to find uh, uh, the rotational invariant, the, the, the derivative operators that are rotational invariants. For, for instance, the Laplacian, not just the partial derivative, but the Laplacian is one. And you see that each of these uh, 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 type of variables that uh, uh, transform according to different representation have their own uh, uh, rotational invariant operators. But most importantly, it's just a, a finite number of them. So you know that uh, if you have a three by three matrix, this matrix has only three rotational invariants. There's a trace, there is the square of the trace of the square of the traceless part of the matrix, and then there's the determinant, and this is it. So this means that you don't need to add uh, an infinite number of parameters. Specify the variables that you want to play with, and then you're done. You have a finite number of bias parameters. So in this, actually, this is a, a um, technical remark, but this, uh, for, for those who uh, know what I'm talking about, this actually unifies all uh, the different uh, ways that have been introduced to talk about bias in the literature. So gamma functions is one, uh, the expansion of orthogonal polynomials that uh, Vincent was uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, earlier I is another. So this unifies all of them. So uh, to me, at least, the fact that there were all these different uh, ways to define bias was a little confusing, but uh, it is actually not the case. Um, so this is, uh, uh, these are my conclusions. So uh, we have said that uh, shell models may be crude, but uh, they still have a lot of uh, information uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in them. And this information is quite generic. Is, is, uh, it, it really tells us something that is model independent. There is assembly bias, and it is, but it is rather simple because all the correlation between uh, small scales and large scales is actually mediated by the slope of the trajectory, which is a, a natural uh, measure for the accretion rate of the halo at the redshift that you identify it. Uh, and finally, this is also, since you have few variables to play with, and then the process becomes Markovian, this lets you uh, um, build a very easily analytical merger trees for those who know what uh, they are. So thank you very much for your attention. Yeah.